John Baltasar is, I think, one of the, I'm sure, one of the leading artists working today, and um, I'm really happy to have John here. And he's one of the two artists who gets the, the award for lifetime achievement this year, an important uh, uh, prize that the that is being other hands of. And uh, um, that prize, of course, is not for a specific project or some great exhibition that happened last year. It's for years and decades of work. And I think John is just one of the most fascinating artists that I know. And I've always been curious about him. I've only worked with him once, small project, but great project in the tiny Kunsthalle Particles in Frankfurt. And, but I've followed what he's doing as long as I've been working with contemporary art. So I'm so happy to be with you, John. And um, and so when he asked me to do the uh, facade, I, I was delighted. Uh, one, that he asked me, uh, and, and two, uh, I, I, I try to, I get bored easily, so, uh, you know, and I, I like to do things uh, that I haven't tried before. And uh, I had just finished uh, in Crayfell working with uh, one of the Mies van der Rohe houses there, and uh, architecture inside and out. And, and prior to that, I'd worked at Porticus, I'd, I'd done work for the, the interior space, with that was site specific. So it seemed uh, only natural that I'd continue on. Uh, and uh, with the facade, uh, I, I treated it very much uh, as a picture plane. And maybe that, I guess one could say that could be an influence of Hollywood, I don't know where everything is a facade. Uh, and literally and figuratively, uh, you know, out of the movies, uh, you, you make a, a front of a building that looks like a real building, but it's just the front of a building. Um, and, uh, and it happens a lot, too. Uh, I remember walking down Sunset Boulevard, Sunset Strip, in the more specific area, and, then, you know, beautiful restaurant uh, uh, shops and so on, and you turn around the corner, and uh, it's, it's just like residential houses, and you can see flowers and crickets, and you just uh, wait a minute, I just turn the corner and it's another world. Um, so I, I think I was trying to do something like that here, that uh, treating the facade as a very flat surface, which, which it is, in, in some respects. Um, I, it's the third of two proposals I've made. Uh, the first proposal uh, was really dealing with the signage uh, of the old pavilion, which is Italia. And uh, what I had done there <coughs> was uh, to uh, uh, bifurcate it uh, verti vertically, and uh, one half is going to be a, uh, uh, a backdrop, a, a, a set, a canvas like a uh, facade, like you do in a movie set. And, but it would have been turned upside down, uh, and it would be in black and white instead of color. So you would have the half real facade, half a substitute, let's say, for, for, you know, for that, and, and turn on the side. Uh, but that wouldn't work because the science is going to be taken down. And the second one, I uh, was going to use this say no more boring art and pop and I then we thought maybe that might be a little bit too pointed. Um, and, and then the third one, I went back to the idea again. Uh, by that time we had the new signage and uh, I decided then to kind of look at it uh, just like a photograph. Uh, and since <coughs> it's very strong uh, 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 architecturally and with the post and lintel certainly uh, uh, suggesting a Roman villa, I thought, well, you know, I'll just um, use that to keep that element, I'll keep the signage, and then I'll make the rest of um, what you see out there, uh, the ocean and, and the sky, uh, except I'll bring it from Southern California, so it's Pacific Ocean uh, and the sky there, and then palm trees uh, uh, from Santa Monica. A flank in it, also architecture left and right, so it's repeating uh, the columns. And, and uh, I sort of see it uh, like a Roman villa that somebody has built in Malibu Beach and brought back to Venice. Um, at any rate, uh, I'm very happy the way it looks, and thank you, Daniel, for the invitation. Uh, I 
said before, my, some of my favorite artists are Urgiato and Matisse, uh, uh, that, that look so simple, you know, that anybody can do it, but, but they're so fundamentally, paradoxically complex. Yeah, that's my, those are my models, and that's what I would like to do, but don't always do it. Right. I, I, I think in my, um, at near the end of painting, I'm trying to, I was trying, and I was in a very insular uh, community and that had nothing to do with art, uh, and in a, in a movie theater without windows, so I was really shut off to the world, and not, not any dialogue with other artists, one or two artists that are living in the same area. Uh, so I really began, since I figured nobody was looking, nobody was caring, and I would try to figure out uh, what art was for me, you know, I had to open it up almost like Descartes and try and find out what was fundamental, uh, at least for me, you know, that where you know, with, with which it, it, there would be no art. And you got you know, one of the course the ideas I got to very simplistic, but it was an idea to choose it. You just had to choose this uh, canvas size over that one, this color over that one, this shape over that, this subject over that. It's just about making a selection, but endless, endless choices. Um, and uh, so a lot of my current work is about that, uh, about and chance, yes, uh, he and, uh, and John Cage is very influential upon me, uh, about setting, setting up a situation where something could occur, you weren't going to dictate it, but it wasn't allowing for everything. Uh, and and I, in, my, in, my, in my notebooks I had written uh, to, a note to myself that I said I will not do any more boring art. And I think that was a reaction uh, to some of the uh, text-based works that I was seeing around that seemed, you know, rather academic. And I thought there was a, you know, I was interested in language, but I think there were many ways to use language, not in this academic style. Um, and uh, so it was a reminder to myself, you know, that I to not do that. But I think fundamental uh, to, to uh, those works and uh, subsequent works um, was my confusion even to this day of, of what uh, signifies a part and what signifies a whole. And just as soon as I think I have it straight in my mind, and I don't. Um, and I, a lot of that comes out of uh, some early experience with uh, billboards that used to be printed on paper and 24 sheets or 18 sheets to a billboard and they would be pasted up. You know, and and um, I, I always liked that kind of imagery, and a friend of mine was in the advertising business. I said, well, if you have any leftover material, can I get it? And I would go over there with my VW bus to pick up some of the niche. unfolding them. And, and, and so they're parts of the whole, of, of a whole image. And by unfolding them, then you get the parts of that image. And it was always surprised to see what I would get. And eventually, of course, I would get a nose, a big nose, or a big ear, or a big something, you know. And, and, uh, I thought, wow, is that a narrow way of that ear and now it's a hole and it's no longer a part. At any rate, you know, that's where it all started. Um, and um, I and I think that's one of the one of the fundamental ways that understanding my work is my confusion between what comprises the whole and what's a part. And I've had a very difficult time since I was a painter of doing a single image because I always think that's only part of the truth, but there's more to it than that, and so I'll have a group of them in the future. Well, uh, probably more intelligent than me in most cases, uh, and you don't have to say everything, you can just give a hint of something, uh, and they'll get it. So then I think, well, how little of a hint can you get before they get it, and at what point don't they get it? And, uh, yeah, so, so in a way, uh, your question about curating, of course, relates to what it is to be a curator at all, and I don't think it's different to, to curate John Bandasari than many other people. It's, of course, easier if you have a fundamental trust in what the artist does. Well, I can yeah. amplify that, that question again about, you know, is it art or is it not art? I used to spend a lot of time in my time my students just looking at things and saying, is that art, is it not art, is that art, is it not art? And, and trying to you know, make, make, well, I was choosing you know, whether it was art or it wasn't art. And then I found myself getting kind of, you know, mildly catatonic, and I'd stop and then pick it up another time. But I, but I still look at things and say, well, why can't that be art? Why can't that be art? You know, it's, it's good mental activity. <laughs>